this edition, Red Meat Ups Breast Cancer Risk. Cancer cases expected to double by the year 2030. And a prostate cancer vaccine gets one step closer to approval. This is Ellen Baker, and Oncology Podcasting begins right now. New research from a University of Leeds team suggests that eating red meat significantly increases a postmenopausal women's chance of breast cancer. The team, based in the UK, monitored 35,000 women over seven years and found that older women who ate one two-ounce portion a day of red meat had a 56% increased risk compared with those who ate none. And those who ate the most processed meat, such as bacon, sausages, ham, or pies, had a 64% greater risk of breast cancer than those who did not. Despite these findings, experts warned it was extremely difficult to pin down the effect of specific parts of the diet on cancer risk and said previous research had produced inconclusive results. According to lead researcher Professor Janet Cade, meat is high in saturated fat, and saturated fat influences the amount of cholesterol the body makes. Cholesterol is a precursor to estrogen, which has been linked to increased risk of breast cancer. Cooking meat at high temperatures might also form carcinogenic compounds. Professor Cade advises women who are currently consuming large amounts of red and processed meat on a regular basis to consider reducing their intake. Earlier findings from the same study showed that premenopausal women who have had the greatest intake of fiber, however, have cut their risk of breast cancer in half. A U.S. study published in November found eating large amounts of red meat might double young women's breast cancer risk. The Archives of Internal Medicine study looked at over 90,000 premenopausal women and found that having one and a half servings of red meat per day almost doubled the risk of hormone receptor positive breast cancer, compared to three or fewer per week. Overall, it can be said that diet is important when cancer is involved as experts estimate that approximately 30% of all cancers in Western countries are linked to one's diet. Oncology Podcasting advises all of its viewers to seriously consider their diets and continue to, or start to, make healthier choices regarding their food intake. According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, the number of diagnosed cancer cases will more than double between the years of 2000 and 2030 mainly in poorer countries. Dr. Peter Boyle, the agency's director, said reasons for the increase include population growth, longer life expectancy, more people smoking in the developing world, and a lack of health care in poor countries. The agency, part of the World Health Organization, expects that by the year 2030, there will be 27 million cases of cancer, 17 million deaths from cancer, and 75 million people living with cancer. New research shows that as time has progressed, there has been an increasing shift of cancer to poor countries. Boyle predicts that between now and 2030, the population will increase from about 6.5 billion to 8 billion in 2030. Therefore, even if the risks remain constant at each five-year age group, because there are more people, there will be more cases of cancer. According to Boyle, one of the unfortunate successes for developed countries in the last 40 years has been their export of cancer risk factors, such as cigarette smoking and alcohol consumption to poor countries. It is these three elements that are going to work together at driving up the amount of global cancer cases. A vaccine to treat prostate cancer came one step closer to approval last week when an advisory panel to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration said the product was safe and effective. The panel recommended the FDA approve Provenge, made by Dendrion Corp. For men whose prostate cancer has spread to other parts of the body and no longer responds to hormone therapy, a decision on whether to approve Provenge is expected in May. If approved, Provenge will become the first vaccine designed to treat existing cancer, rather than prevent the disease from occurring. To make the vaccine, a patient's own cells are combined with a protein that revs up the immune system and causes it to attack the tumor. In a clinical trial of 127 men, Provenge seemed to help vaccinated men live about 4.5 months longer 
than those given an inactive placebo treatment. However, there was no difference in how long it took for the men's cancers to begin growing again. A second study also found no difference in how long it took the cancers to resume growing and so was stopped early. Nevertheless, the panel voted 13 to 4 in favor of saying Provenge is effective. It voted 17 to 0 in favor of saying the vaccine is safe. Side effects during the clinical trials were mostly mild and included chills, fatigue, fever, and back pain. However, slightly more than 5% of the men given Provenge suffered a stroke compared to none of those on placebo. If approved, Provenge would provide another treatment option for men who currently have few options. Because Provenge has not yet been approved by the FDA, it is only available through clinical trials. Dandrion is conducting a phase three trial called IMPACT to test Provenge further in men with metastatic prostate cancer that has worsened while on hormone therapy. That's all for this edition of Oncology Podcasting. This is Ellen Baker. Thank you for listening.